Hi, my name is Hossein Feridouni. I'm a research assistant at Technical University of Darmstadt. I'm going to explain our paper, Federated Mobile Cyber Risk Intelligence, which is a joint work with University of Würzburg and Kobil in Germany. Today, we are witnessing more and more mobile services and applications launch in different application domains. The trend is amplified by Corona pandemic that forced many organizations and even traditional businesses to move to online space. Oftentimes, these mobile services perform security critical operations such as financial transaction. Consequently, mobile devices are exposed to a variety of attacks, for instance, through users installing potentially malicious applications or jailbreaking device to circumvent limitation imposed by OS, disabling part of OS security controls. Therefore, mobile service providers uh, are not only concerned with the security of their only and their online services, but also need to consider the challenging operating environments of their applications. For protection, service providers often deploy application-level defensive strategies such as application hardening and intrusion detection in combination with risk management. Note that OS vendors typically do not provide the possibility to integrate kernel-level protection mechanism in the applications. Moreover, hardware-based security mechanisms are either not available on all devices or when available, they are mainly used by platform vendors for their own purpose and not accessible to the third party. Therefore, application level protection often remains the only available options to service providers. So such protection is limited and cannot to full extent resist against advanced threats like kernel level exploits. So uh, as a solution, service, uh, mobile service providers develop risk management techniques that helps to uh, limit exposure of their services on risky platforms. Risk monitoring and management are common measures used by established service providers, but it is often out of reach for small and medium-sized organizations due to lack of expertise, significant cost, and time to market constraints. So one promising solution to this problem is, um, let's say, to enable sharing of information, risk information among service providers of various sizes and levels of security. The idea of sharing threat intelligence information has already explored in the context of cyber threat intelligence systems or CTI. However, CTI systems exchange knowledge about observed security and privacy breaches using indicator of compromise like IP addresses, emails, logs, incident response reports, so forth and so on. However, CTI sharing systems face several challenges and concerns. They are difficult to manage due to the vast amount of threat data and also are too complex to provide actionable, in actionable intelligence. So another challenge is achieving interoperability and automation. Privacy and legal liability are another uh, challenges. So participants, uh, for example, some organization may be hesitant to share their data due to possible reputation damage from disclosed attacks. In this work, we design and develop a cyber risk intelligence sharing system for mobile platform CRI system. So our platform concentrates on sharing risk and tackles the challenge of already existing CTI systems. Our core idea is to share knowledge about the security risk in form of machine learning models. In particular, we apply federated learning concepts uh, to enable participants uh, to collaboratively build a global risk model for detection. So here in the figure, you see a high level overview of our system. The system uh, model involves uh, the following entities, a CRI providers, service providers, and end users. Service providers provide users uh, online services uh, uh, through their mobile phones. End users use their mobile phones to access the services offered by service providers and may perform uh, security sensitive operations such as login or performing financial transactions. Service providers conduct risk detection and build local uh, risk models using their, their own local data sets. The CRI providers, uh, the, the, CRI, the CRI provider is responsible for aggregation local risks built by service providers 
and uh, this uh, the, C the CRI aggregates all of these uh, local models sent by service providers into a global model and send it back uh, to the service providers to do risk detections. So in the following, I explain our platform operation. In particular, operational cycle can be divided into three phases. The first phase is data collection. So initially, our platform operates in monitoring mode and passively collect risk indicators from end user. Upon session establishment with end user, uh, the risk indicators are communicated to the risk management component of service providers and stored there. Then federated model uh, training starts the process is locally initiated by service provider by downloading an initial random model from the CRI provider. The initial model is trained locally and then uh, the local updates are uh, sent to the service providers which uh, aggregates uh, them into one joint global model. The updated global model is again downloaded by service provider for the next training iteration or to be used locally for risk detection. The last phase is risk detection. Once a trained global model is available, service provider can use it for risk detection, in particular open user operation, for instance, login or uh, another sensitive security sensitive operation, the risk indicators associated with the login are communicated over dedicated secure channel to risk management backend server and evaluated against the global uh, risk uh, model to obtain the risk value associated with the user. When the app interacts with its service provider, the mobile server uh, the mobile service uh, on server side will query the risk management for the application's uh, risk level and consequently adapt the services provided to the application. For example, if the risk uh, level is deemed to be on specific threshold, security critical functions may be disabled or sensitive information made inaccessible to the application. Here I'm going to uh, briefly describe the risk management and monitoring system and indicate risk indicators that we use in our paper. So uh, as shown in the figure, the system consists of several components. The protected app that includes a mobile service connecting to its service provider over a service specific communication channel and a risk management component that monitors the runtime environment of smartphone concerning specific risk indicators that correlate with certain traits. So, uh, the risk indicators are grouped into separate categories. We call them risk ID. These risk IDs can be easily extended when uh, new risk factors are identified. So we focus on the following risk IDs. Uh, jailbreak indicates the presence of jailbreak software or another indicator of rooted device. However, jailbreaks are often utilized by power user to enable additional features on a smartphone, uh, but they cannot be regarded as a proof of, proof of actual attack, but only a risk factor. Malicious applications indicate the presence of installed application on the smartphone that may, that may pose a potential security risk. Code injection indicates that application code is not consistent with a known benign baseline states. Simulator indicates that application runs on a simulator rather than a real device. Uh, running uh, application on emulator would allow an attacker to mm, easily modify underlying components of operating system, therefore circumvent uh, OS provided uh, protection mechanisms. So uh, together with our industry partner, we collect a real world large scale uh, risk data set. The data set represents in total 23.8 million users of security critical mobile applications since Android 4 and iOS 6 provided by nine different uh, service providers and data sets uh, were collected over a course of six years in different sectors like uh, financial services, payments and insurance in multiple countries on European continent. In the table, uh, you will see the distribution of the devices uh, in terms of operating systems system and uh, service providers. Here I'm going to present the technical details of the local risk modeling. At the core of our approach, there is a machine learning pipeline uh, and there are several steps involved in the pipeline, which I'm going to explain that. Data cleaning in order to ensure the quality of 
quality and mitigate effect of noisy data, we clean the data by identifying and removing errors and duplicate data. In addition to risk IDs provided by risk monitoring system, we found that application metadata characterizing the app itself and properties of the platform have a significant impact on the quality of classification results. So to establish ground rules for machine learning, we labeled risks. So we labeled them manually using support of data experts of uh, the industry partner with many years of expertise in commercial application security. The security team, including four experts in several face-to-face -face meeting, went over the data and discussed which uh, label they should have. Data processing, pre-processing. Before feeding the features to the model, they need to be transformed in a format that model can understand and process it. First, we shuffled the data and the data was converted into sequence of tokens and the tokens were mapped to numerical indices ready to fit to embedding layer in our model to generate dense vector of real values. Then we utilized gated recurrent unit is a variant of uh, RNN designed for effective handling of sequential data, but also useful for non-sequential data. After constructing the model architecture, we find the, the model hyperparameters hyper and fit the model on the uh, training set. So at the end, uh, we just uh, evaluated our model. To evaluate the performance of the trained model, we used common performance metrics such as precision, recall, and F1 score. Precision indicates how many detected items are risks, uh, recall indicates how many risks are detected, and finally F1 score is harmonic mean of precision and recall. We conducted a set of experiments to evaluate our approach in different scenarios. Experiments are divided into two steps. In the first step, which is client-wise step, we train separate risk detection models for each service provider using their local data sets and evaluate their performance against both the local data sets and on the data sets of other service providers. In the second experiment, which is federated setup, we utilize FL to train a global model that aggregates the local model of individual service providers. We then evaluate the performance of the global model on the data sets of all service providers. We can see that a federated model can deliver comparable performance though to those of locally trained model. Using federated learning service provider can learn from each other's data and can uh, boost uh, their own performance in detection and classification tasks. On top of this, federated learning delivers better privacy uh, as they do not, as the cl as clients uh, do not share uh, their training data. However, there are some uh, adversarial threats that in upcoming slide, I will explain them. These tables show the performance of federated model in terms of precision, recall, and F1 score per service providers. And according to the results, we obtain above 99% accuracy in all cases. And here we will see the number of false positive rates is less than 2% uh, for all uh, service providers. Despite its benefit, federated learning has been shown to be vulnerable to adversarial threats like data poisoning, model poisoning, also known as backdoor, and privacy attacks such as inference attack, data reconstruction attack, and so on. However, several approaches have been proposed that combine secure aggregation with defense against backdoor injection. I will refer you to some of those works, including two recent works from our group. One will be presented in NDSS this year, and the other one will be presented in using security 2022. We will recall that these defenses can be easily integrated into our platform to mitigate these attack vectors. Thank you for your time and attention.